Hugo, in, in one word, how can you describe that? Uh, a little bit of frustrating night, you know. Um, we felt we did enough to win the game and really it was just uh, one moment from a throw in that perhaps we switched off a little bit from. But no, it's a lot. It was, we've had a, a difficult few days in the sense we've been up and down the country. Um, and they were a good side, Buxton. They're a lot better than, than people probably give them credit for, what the league table suggests. But I think we did enough to win the game tonight. And the frustrating thing was the game kept being slowed down. You know, we're trying to get the game going. We're trying to do this, we're trying to do that. But there's always two or three players over the ball. The referee's bringing things back, perhaps the things that he's, he's maybe sort of allowing them to slow the game down, should we say, all right? So uh, that was a little bit frustrating. But at least we've got 13 games to go. We're in a great position. Let's see where we go. And just on that fact, it was a surprise then when there was only four minutes of time added on at the end. Yeah, I, I, we thought there'd be six or seven minutes, uh, but you know you'd have to ask the referee why there was only four because I, I don't know the answer to that. One nil up though, there were some great chances, great save as well to deny you, but there were opportunities there, weren't there, to, to put the game to bed. Yeah, I think the keeper in particular, the Buxton keeper, made one outstanding save, didn't he? Uh, which looked like the, the was going in the top corner. But we, we've created enough to put the ball in the back of the net. And on another day, they'll go in the back of the net. So, listen, uh, point's a point. We haven't lost. We're OK. Um, nothing really to see here to worry about. It's a shame, because at Buxton, there was one switch off, which gave them the goal, wasn't it? In, in the six-yard box. And, and it's a bit similar tonight. Um, yeah, I, th I think, yeah, looking back at th that game, um, that, was a, that was a funny game, wasn't it? We had two sent off and then we battered them with nine men. Uh, and sure we got something from that game as well. So, um, yeah, listen, football's a funny game. It's, it can be frustrating at times as much as it could be brilliant at times. And, and, and tonight's one of those nights. It's a little bit more frustrating. Good, a bit quality from Aaron, wasn't it, to, to give you the lead? Yeah, this, uh, I mean, I know Aaron well. I know, I've known him a long time. And... Um, his biggest attribute is his pace, you know, running in behind, and that's what he did tonight. It was a great ball in behind, and you know, he, he had the, the ability to remain calm in his thinking and score, so, so well done to him. I think he's scored six goals for us now since he's been here, so um, he's contributing in, in many ways, and uh, listen, like the rest of them, there's always more they can do, and, um, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pleased for Aaron. Do you think some lady tonight? I know that you, you talk about the miles you do, and yeah, yes, you're full time, but it, it must take a toll at some stage. Um, no, I don't think we're, we were leggy in any way. I mean, we're still um, attacking and, and winning the ball back and trying to attack right up to the last minute. So uh, if you're leggy, you find that difficult to do. So um, I think if you're questioning the fitness, not, I don't think we're unfit at all. Um, and it's been enough time now since the last game, so I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest we were leggy in any way. So we, the boys came in for a recovery yesterday, and um, we've had plenty of time to recover, plenty of sleep. So no, I, I'm not sure I'd, I'd suggest we were leggy. Yeah, well, I just wonder whether it's, it's the mileage just just has a, an impact at some stage. Um, not not necessarily, because you've got to remember it is the same for every every team. I mean, Buxton went to Chorley on Saturday and they've come here tonight so it's, it's the same for everybody so we can't really use that as, a, as an excuse to go well we didn't win because we've done too much travelling I don't think that's fair I just think perhaps that um, you know every time we try to get ourselves into, into a rhythm tonight and get the game going we found it really difficult to do that because there was one or two influences that didn't allow that to happen all we ever want to do is, is get the ball in play I mean there's been some games here at the Walks this year where believe it or not over 90 minute, 95 minutes, the ball in, was in play in one particular game for 36 minutes. And out of those 36 minutes, we had the ball and were attacking for 25 minutes of that. So a lot of the teams that we play, they want the ball off the pitch, they want to slow it down. They know that we want to play and get the ball playing and we just want to keep attacking and transitioning and attacking. And the teams are obviously going to do whatever they feel they need to do to, to slow that down. I would imagine the change room's a little bit sombre, is it? Um, uh, I think not, not necessarily sombre. Um, I think it's a little bit of disappointment that they haven't won the game. So, as I said, we've got 30 more attempts to win 30 more games. So, we'll do our best to win as many of them as we can. <laughs> we can't say any fairer than that. But obviously, injuries are starting to, to pile up, and, and Paul Jones now missing, and that's the first game he's ever missed for, for Liv. It's, it's it you know, injuries, some of them are you know, they're a little bit out of our control. Like Paul's, you know, he's got a, a problem with his finger. Uh, what that's going to be. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll assess him over the next few days. I think he needs to have a little bit further um, 
meetings with medical people before we know exactly. But uh, Sam Blair, I mean, let's give him some credit. You know, he's made his debut tonight. Sam's been with us on loan from Norwich all season. Uh, he trains every day and he's, he's, he's a, an important part of the group because he always has been. And I think he, he did himself proud tonight and he made one particular very, very good save. It was the only real thing he had to do, but he did it very, very well. So I, I think we should applaud him for that. It's an annoyance as well as he only had one thing to do, wasn't it really? Yeah, apart from pick the ball at the yeah. back of the net, but that's not his fault, you know. If you if you switch off from something or don't pick people up in the box and you allow people to take one or two touches in your box and shoot, then the chances are at this level they're going to score. So that, that's the only real disappointment of tonight. But I don't want to take anything away from Sam because the goal wasn't his fault. And I think for a young man who's making his way in the game, I thought he, he, he did himself exceptionally proud tonight. As you say, though, he's been involved for... for Many, many weeks and months, so that's, that's ideal for him just to step in. Yeah, he's been with us all, you know, I can't remember since when, the majority of the season, and you know, we thank Norwich for the fact that they've allowed him to be with us for the season. And he, he's been really, really important because he makes training better for the lads because he's a good goalkeeper. Um, so is Paul, uh, so is uh, Tommy Dixon Hodge. You know, they, they're good goalkeepers and, and they make training better because they're good keepers and players have to work hard to beat them. It's obviously the, a run of three home games and now, now Scarborough, a tough one coming up on, on Saturday. Yeah, uh, you know, the, you get to the stage of the season now where, you know, it, it's colder, the pitches are a little bit harder to play on. Um, this is a quite a direct league, so um, there's a lot of sleeves being rolled up by, by certain teams. There are a lot of the teams in the division, the Scarborough are no different. They're, they're, they're a good side, they're good at what they do, they've got their strengths. Uh, I think they drew last night, didn't they, away at, at Bradford? So, uh, yeah, listen, we'll look forward to the game. Uh, we had a good game up there. We came back from, again, from a losing position to, to draw up there. It was a bit of a weird game, that, because if I remember rightly, the first goal, the goal moved. The second goal, the player <laughs> uh, was off the pitch behind the goal, came back on the pitch to tap it in, and you know, okay. But uh, listen, they're, they're a good side, it'd be a tough game. No, we certainly can't question the spirit of the side. You go back to Saturday, 3 1 down against Fylde to, to come away with something from that one? Yeah, I mean, I think we should also give File some credit. They were very, very good in the first half, whilst we weren't. Um, but, you know, there's some things that we spoke about at half-time. Everyone seems to think that we went, you know, Tom and I went into the change room and threw teacups around and stuff. It wasn't the case. It was just, we needed to, on, on that particular game, we needed to get Josh Barrett and Ben Stevens on the ball more. And as well, how do we get them onto the ball? And uh, I thought the second half at File, we were, we were terrific. And we could have won the game. So it literally was a game of two halves, but whilst they could argue that they could have scored more goals in the first half, we'll argue we could have scored more in the second half. So I don't think either team deserved to lose the game Saturday. And I thought it was a really, really top quality game of football and a great advert for this division. And I thought the two, those two teams show why we're currently first and second. The, the walks has been the mainstay of, of this sort of promotion challenge in a way, and win after win after win. Just recent games, the odd drop up point here and there. Do, do you worry about that home form, given that especially as we're one well, of uh, three home games in a row? No, I don't. Um, I think we've drawn three at home now, and we've lost one, and we've won all the others. So, no, it isn't to go a whole season unbeaten is at home or away is really, really, really hard. And to go a whole season winning every single game at home, it's never going to happen, really. It, 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 it's rare, isn't it? So I think our home record's been very good, personally. So um, you're at the stage of the season as well, remember, where you're playing teams where the stuff at stake, not just for us, but also for them, because some teams are looking over the shoulders, some teams are, are looking up the table, trying to get into the playoffs or maintain themselves in the playoffs. So this is where it gets interesting now. So um, look, you know, one game at a time, that's all we're doing. Can we win the next football match? We'll have a go. And then we'll try and win the one after that. And it's been no different since the start of the season. So um, we don't feel there's any pressure on us. Um, we're just doing our best to win as many games as football as we can. It was certainly a feeling that, that something had happened at half time because the way you came out of the second half tonight was, you know, you basically camped around that penalty area, weren't you? Did, did you do the same as you did it for, not throw any teacups, but just work out what the, you needed to do? The one thing I'll say about our changing room is that it's, it's kind of like they're very critical of themselves. So before we go in and speak to them, the players will have their own conversations and they'll say what they need to say. So from a management coach's 
point of view, it's not about shouting at people isn't necessarily going to win your game of football. Mm. So if you're, if you're winning, OK, how can we continue to win? If you're drawing, how can we win? If you're losing, how do we get back into the game? Mm. And that's all it's ever been all season. OK, sometimes uh, some harsher words are, so, are told, but it's not a case of smashing the place up or threatening people or, you know, was it? Things to say about Fergie, you... it was, it was hair, the hairdryer, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, I certainly haven't got a hairdryer because <laughs> uh, I, I don't need one. Uh, but no, it's, it's not about that. It's just about how, how can we help them? Because obviously on the side, we can identify areas that we think that we could do better at. Or like I said to you about Fard, it was could we get uh, Barrett or Stevens on the ball a little bit more? So there's certain tweaks that are made about how can we get higher up the pitch or how can we get into areas where we can cause them more problems. And that's pretty much what half time's about. Because you, you, you do stay out here a little while and let them do that. Yeah, we, we let the players yeah, the way there, the, yeah, the way that we, we do, I'm listening this, every, every club's different, you know. So for us, rather than just go straight in and, and you, you just shoot from the hip, mm -hmm. whatever comes first into your, your head, we prefer to just to get together and go, OK, well, what do we need to talk about? And usually, you know, T Tommy will go in and he'll say two or three things. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's Mark, you know. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's thought out, like everything that we do. It's not just to go in and shoot from the hip and see what comes out. It's, um, we have a discussion first, so we probably leave him alone for eight or nine minutes. Have you got an update on Cameron Hargreaves? How, how close is he to a return? Do you, see him, you, do you not see him tonight? He was. He took part. In, he was in the warm-up tonight. So uh, we're hoping Cam, Cameron's. It's been really frustrating for him, really, because he. There was a clash of knees in training a little some time back, and it's caused him a problem. So, um, and it, it, it wasn't like he was in a lot of pain. It was like, but it just certain movements weren't quite right, and he was getting really, really frustrated. And in the last few days, it's like change for him so he, he he trained with the team for a bit yesterday he had no reaction so he came and did the warm-up tonight no reaction I hope we'll find out tomorrow he'll have a day's rest tomorrow he'll come in Thursday but we'll just try and keep building him up the best that we can but we've got to look after him as well because if you overload him on his way back from his injury uh, there's every chance that he'll break down again and we're going to make sure that doesn't happen so um, between all the knowledge that we have in the staff we'll, we'll do our best to get back on the pitch as soon as possible. I mean, we know it's a squad game, but how much have you missed his influence on the pitch? Cam Cameron's a, a top, top player, and uh, what he brings to the side, more than anything, is that he is he likes to press, he likes to go and win the ball back, and what that does, it allows other people around him to, to get on the ball. Um, so he plays to his abilities to allow others to play to their abilities, if that, if that makes sense. So. Of course, we miss him, and uh, we'd we'll be delighted when, he, when he's when he's back. Okay. Ollie Scott, how far away is he? I didn't notice if he had a ski boot on tonight or not. Uh. No, he he um, obviously he he had a, a fracture um, after we after, from the Leamington game, so yeah, he had to was wearing a boot for a bit. But again, he's he's back in now. Um, he spent yesterday with Lindsay, um, and today uh, he'll have a rest day tomorrow. And again, it's just a, gr a gradual build-up over the, over the time. I know, you know, we appreciate times running out, and Ollie's re like Cameron. They're really, really keen to play because they're desperate to help the team yeah. uh, and be available for, for Tommy to pick. So, but again, it's still, you can't just chuck them back in because the boots off. You know, they've lost a bit of the football fitness, and so we've got to gradually build them back up and look after them because you know it's important that, that we do that for them.